What is up, YouTube? We are here with another, we can call this Friday Night Fly Fishing Live, except we're not really fly fishing at all, are we? Uh, we're talking about fly fishing. And what's really interesting is I wish I would have kind of rearranged some of these videos a little bit because what I would have done in hindsight is I would have done uh, our cold water episode now because Michigan's trout opener is tomorrow morning super stoked for that um maybe we'll do a little bonus section after this whole thing is said and done about what we're planning to do for trout opener tomorrow i'm um, pretty stoked about this series this is going to be a warm water episode um tonight so get your beverage um i've been on this ginger beer kick check this out this like ginger beer thing right here going on these tops open like really Ooh, i'm gonna break all my electronics that would that would that would not be cool at all actually ah there it is get rid of that i'm gonna break something tonight i'm out of control we got a lot of cool stuff going on i've got a guest that we're um bringing in from the interwebs and coming to you um his name is benjamin hate he's from hates wanderings he does this cool thing catch release wander you'll see him do that when i bring him into the video so um I'm gonna roll the intro and I forgot I have some giveaway items. I'm gonna hold those giveaway items up. The person that asks the best question tonight, I'm gonna pick two winners, all right? I got two hats from Sims that are super cool. I'm gonna give both of those hats away tonight for the person that answers, no, the person that asks the best questions. Funny thing is, is I'm gonna roll this intro. I'm literally gonna have to pull these headphones out of my ears, run in, get the hats, run back in 20 seconds and then i will be able to show you those and benjamin hate will be with us when we're done let's do this one two three go And I made it. Check it out. Here we are. Headphones back in. Um, these are your choices, uh, except for this one, because there's a guy, Brook Trout, won this one. Brook Trout won the brown trout hat, so that's there. Whoever asks, the two people that ask the best questions tonight, one will get this hat, one will get this hat. Special thanks to Sims. They rock, and they they got some products that we can give away without further ado. Let's get my mug over into the side here and uh, let's bring back Benjamin Haight. What's up, buddy? You are live. How's it going? Uh, can you hear me uh, can you hear right me I can hear you, bro. We're, we're good to go. All right, so, All right, so catch him. There catch him it is. Ah! There we go. <laughs> All right, so um, real quick here, I'm gonna give a shout out to uh, some of the people that are watching. Cody, Brook Trout, Steve, we got a bunch of friends on here, and uh, we're super stoked about this. We're going to be talking about warm water fisheries tonight. So, um, man, I'm out of breath. Uh, what are you up to, man? So, like, how much how much warm water do we have in the in the in the UP right now? Uh, not, not that much. I'm just tonight, just tonight driving. driving uh, saw some, saw some ice, on the, ice on the lakes. Some of the lakes are, are starting, starting to, to clear, clear, but there are but still, there are still a, lot a lot of places, places out, out there with the ice. The rivers, the though, are starting, are starting to open up. up. Rivers have been open. Uh, water's actually not as high this year as it was last year. Yeah. 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 So, um, all right. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to talk about warm water fisheries tonight, specifically in the UP. Um, Benjamin, you started guiding last year. Um, That's right. You've been running a YouTube channel for quite a while. Um, why don't you go ahead and just give us a basic introduction about who you are? Just, I mean, I know who you are. I know my buddy Steve knows who you are that's watching. There's a number of people. We got 13 people right now. By the way, we've got 13 people watching. We only got six likes. You guys got to get on that. Huh? Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be fun. Because um, I'm not just in here talking by myself anymore. This is like, this is exciting for me. And in reality, I'm excited for Trout Opener too. So. Um, so go ahead and just give us a little spiel right now on what brought you to the UP, your experience fishing, and what you like about the UP. Let's just start with like what brought you here and, and what your fishing experience has been like from when you started here until now. 
All right, All right, so, so um, what brought, um, what brought me to the UP? Uh, a, job uh, a job opportunity brought me up here. I'm actually a high school teacher, and a job, job opening, opening you know, you know, happened. happened. I saw it, and I said, and I said to my wife, we need to make this happen. This happen. Uh, uh, and, that and that was maybe about nine, nine eight, eight, nine years ago. Years ago. Uh, ever uh, since I have, I have been, been you know, fishing, fishing the rivers, the streams, the, streams, the lakes, the lakes as, as much as I can. I only really fish inland waters, so anything that touches any of the Great Lakes, I don't, I don't fish, fish that, that basically, at basically at all. Um, I, I love fishing, love fishing from a kayak. Um, um, I love wade fishing, wade fishing and, and now fishing, now fishing from, from a raft. From a raft. Um, great, ways great ways to see, to see the wild, the wild waters, waters that we have. Uh, and, and so strictly warm water species. G- give me give me the rundown on the on this on the fish that you act not before we do that. Um, so you moved up here and then you you just started locally like where you are you know we're in iron county people know that okay location disclaimer shout out to the person by the way that gave us the thumbs down before we even started you're awesome um so uh you're gonna be you're 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 located in iron county but like the area that you have um around here uh the up in general like did you just kind of start at the home base and then kind of just work, start working your way out? Is that what, what you got going on? Um, that's, um, a that's a great question. Uh, there's so, there's many so many rivers, rivers up, here. up here. There's so many lakes up here. Uh, there's so many, uh, there's so many areas that, that, you, can that you can get to fish. Um, um, you know, there's, not you know, there's not really, really one spot in the UP, in the UP that, that has this warm, warm water fishery. fishery. It's throughout. throughout. Um, um, the western, the western UP, UP touches, you know, all, you know, all along Wisconsin, Wisconsin and, and all of those Wisconsin, Wisconsin rivers, rivers, they're all warm, they're all warm water as well. Well, not all of them, um, but, but a, lot, a, lot, a lot of them, lot of them are like walleye, walleye smallmouth, small mouth, musky pike, pike rivers, and, and, and you know, the UP, we have those as well. Um, so um, so all, of all of those species, I don't really uh, fish for largemouth because they aren't really a river fish. Mostly smallmouth, musky, that's my normal game. Right on. I'm trying to um, navigate a couple things here. Apparently, we've got, a, we've got a nasty echo going on that we've been told about. So I'm going to try to kill that here real quick. If you guys would, I did a couple things here to try to mitigate that. If you get that word, mitigate, that's, that's become a part of my vocabulary now, which is kind of weird. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to trying to kill that echo. Hopefully, it stopped. Uh, I'm looking to a, a techie in the next room with me here. As we do that, um, Benjamin, do me a favor, quick, as we're as we're a part of this, and um, keep rolling with just you know kind of your development as I h- try to track down this. I apologize, guys, but as I try to track this down, see if you guys can, uh, Benjamin, go ahead and give us a little bit all more right, rundown, right. kind of like where you expanded from there. All right, so, all right, so um, you know, I started up here nine years, years ago, ago, like I said, uh, just, uh, going, just out going out and. and Flipping, flipping little spinners, little spinners into, the into the rivers. Um, I had this I had thought, thought that every, every single river in the UP was, was trout, trout water. water. I don't know what I was thinking, but I came from downstate Michigan. Michigan. So moving, so moving you know, 500, you know, 500 miles, miles north, north, I in my head, in my head I, thought I thought everything must hold trout. trout. That is, that is correct. Not, correct. Everything not everything holds trout. trout. Uh, a, lot uh, of a lot of our rivers, rivers are actually like, like transitional rivers. rivers. The, the, the headwaters, headwaters are cold. cold. They move from, they that, move from cold that cold into, into you, know, slightly you know slightly warmer. warmer. And, then and then by the time, by the time they've gone, they've gone 50, 50, 100, 100 miles or so, or so they turn into warm water fisheries. And then they and then they usually then run into either like Michigan or Lake Superior. And so that's, and so kind, that's of kind of what I started at Spinners, little spinners and, and I figured, I figured out quickly, quickly that, that I needed to I needed change, to change what, what I was doing. Um, I, had I had a small ultralight, ultralight at the time, and that, and that was not, not getting, getting it done. It done. Um, I think I caught, I think my, I caught first my first musky ever up here, up here on like, a, on like a, I don't know, I don't know, a tiny, a tiny little lure. Um, you know, nine, you know, years, nine ago, years ago, I didn't know the difference between a northern, a northern pike, pike and a musky. Uh, I can remember, uh, I can remember back, back to catching, catching that fish, thinking to myself, hmm, hmm. This, is a this is a weird looking pike. Looking pike. Uh, and, so uh, and so I've you know, obviously, obviously learned, a learned a lot since, since then. then. Uh, I fish, uh, I fish um, warm, water warm water rivers, rivers about 100, 100 days, days per year. Per year.
Oh, here we go. All right, I'm back. Man, some technical difficulties here with this live feed. I really apologize for that. Um, and as we get uh, as we get rolling here with some more stuff, um, we're gonna go ahead and. Uh, oh man, I apologize. This is really this is really killing me right now. I thought that we had this live feed thing. When we're bringing in somebody else, we've got a couple different things taking place here. Um, so what I'm going to do is try to get, um, <laughs> what do we got happening on this audio star? So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, try to do this. Benjamin, go ahead and, and keep rattling off some stuff for us on warm water fisheries. I apologize about this guys. I really apologize. Usually I have all this tech stuff figured out. Uh, right on. Uh, so right I on. I so I guess I can keep, uh, going, keep going on the, on the warm, water warm water fisheries. Um, um, what's awesome, what's about, awesome these, about these these river these systems is, is you know, as I was, you know, as saying, I was they, saying, they, they start in that trout water and slowly, slowly they turn they into smallmouth, smallmouth walleye, walleye uh, uh, musky, uh, musky pike, pike rivers. rivers, and and and, and most, most of the river systems up here are quite quite remote, and there's only you know a couple of access points. So you're really really um, you know, fishing, you know, fishing for a kayak, kayak or fishing for a canoe. Uh, it's just, uh, it's a, just great a great way, to, way get to get out and, 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 see, and to see the rivers. rivers. And, that's and that's basically what I do. What I, do. Um, um, I have a thing, have a thing against, against motors, motors, so I try my, so I try my best to, to avoid, avoid locations, locations where you can get, can get a motorized, a motorized uh, uh, vessel. Uh, vessel. Um, um, and there's a lot, and there's a lot of places that you can get lost in the UP fishing these warm water rivers. Smallmouth in the Upper Peninsula. Row. To, to quite large, quite large sizes, sizes. Um, a 20-inch 20 um, 20 fish is a monstrous, monstrous smallmouth, smallmouth. Um, and that is, and that kind, is of pushing, kind of pushing pushing the top, pushing the top for, most for most of these fish. fish. There, are there are some fish, some fish that you can find in that 22-inch range, range, but they are very rare. Very rare. Um, but there's, but there's, there's a lot of options, options for your other, other species as well. As well you know, fishing for fishing smallmouth, you can catch musky, you can catch pike, you can catch walleye. And on a, and on a, uh, uh, a little streamer, streamer on like a seven, like a seven weight, weight or something, or something. That, can be, that can be, uh, that can be, that can be a blast. blast. Um, Seth, do you Seth, want me, do to, want me kind to kind of step into, step my, into my notes here, here and keep yeah, going? Yeah, go ahead for me, man. I the the issue is right now. There's some kind of weird loop coming through with your audio. Your your microphone for some reason is echoing just a little bit and. I can't seem to figure out in any way, shape, or form. I have all of this audio stuff in front of me right now, and I cannot seem to uh, navigate that. So, I mean, they can hear you. It's just that you've got like this, there's like a slight echo on your um, on your vocal on that mic. So, I'm not I'm I'm not 100% sure what's going on here. We're gonna keep rolling though, guys. I hope that you guys can you can go this. Um, do you want to start off? So, for those of you that are here. Um, go ahead and, and get some questions in about your warm water questions and fishing the UP. Again, I apologize for that uh, for that issue with the audio. We do have so, we do have a bunch of pictures and videos and stuff here. So, um, and I actually have some questions as well because I have shared a raft with this guy in the past. Um, and one of my favorite things um, that that I really really appreciate about uh, being able to get in the raft with Benjamin is that you know he focuses a lot on those warm water species and different things and um and so i'm able as i focus more on cold water species to be able to learn a lot from him and even though there's times in the boat when uh, we get to learn from each other having a time like this where i can just sit down and you know the bummer right now is that we, we technically can't share a boat <laughs> uh share a raft with one another just because of the situation that we're we all find ourselves in right now but um, so do you have uh, on your notes right now, just given that, that long intro, again, I apologize for the technical difficulties there, folks. Um, after that long intro, is there, is there something that you want to jump to right off the bat when it comes to, um, you know, our fly fishing, uh, musky, you know, deal when we're talking warm water species, smallmouth, walleye, musky, is there certain, what, what's your favorite, what's your favorite species right off the bat to target? Uh, I think, uh, think smallmouth small would, would probably be my favorite. Be my favorite. Really, over uh, musky? Yeah, yeah. I, I like I catching, like catching musky. musky. I, I hate fishing, fishing musky. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it's a grind, man. It is an it is an absolute grind. grind. So, so what I like so doing is I like going out there and and fishing for fishing small for smallmouth, fishing for, fishing for walleye, fishing for, walleye, fishing for pike. And while and while you're doing that, incidentally, you will catch a musky. In my in my mind, I'd rather catch you know you know four four smallmouth, one one walleye. And one 36 inch musky, then fish, fish all day, and, and catch a 45 inch musky. Personally, 
that's my that's thing. Some, my people thing. some people rather catch a fourth inch muskie. You know, props to them. Props to them. But that's, but not, that's, that's not, not my that's style. style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so you have some of the uh, some of the uh, smallmouth experiences from uh, your your deals here. If I go and I get some of these, uh, you want me to just grab one of these? Yeah, yeah, small mouth yeah. clips here. Bring it up, bring and, it up. Uh, and see what we got. Let's see here. You've got a ton of stuff for me, and this is super awesome. Um, let me just start out actually with giving them a snippet of. Uh, you had like a thirty second clip in here, didn't you? Yeah, of yeah. fly fishing in the UP. Just a, a little, just a little, little montage. A little montage. Yeah. Two montage, two montage things, yeah, there. right on. Let me go ahead and play one of those, and um, let's just see what we got here. They can't hear you right now. Okay. Cool. Which one is the small one? The small one is the one that looks like the one that looks like the one. First musky on the fly. All right, so we're back. Um, first question that we had come in that I think is a legit question. Um, what do we got going on here? So when hunting muskie, he, uh, Steve's asking, he saw the video where you suggest that it'll likely happen when you're fishing for other species. Okay. Yeah. So so do you look for muskie waters or is it just by chance? Like, do you have protocol, like when you're scouting for muskie water that you look for? Or is there, um, or is it just like randomly you're like, oh, there's a muskie, there's muskies in here? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Um, originally, you know, years ago, I had no idea that there were muskie in, in certain bodies of water. And so I'd be fishing for smallmouth and, you know, there'd be a follow on my lure or, uh, I'd actually sometimes had muskie that would bite the smallmouth that I'd caught. Um, and that's where I kind of realized, oh, wow, there's muskie in here. Um, usually you're not going to look for like certain types of vegetation or certain rivers for muskie that's just not going to happen all of that research has already been done and most places that hold muskie they are you know out there like for instance minnesota and wisconsin i'm just going to give those out i don't like giving out information on the up but minnesota and wisconsin have complete directories for all of their rivers and it says what species that are in there so if you know a certain species in that river system um, that kind of helps you then to look for the the areas to target musky um, but again if you've never actually fished for musky i always suggest fish for smallmouth uh, just put a metal leader on even fly fishing with a metal leader of some kind and uh, eventually you will catch that muskie. I had a angler this last year. He was casting a 10 weight. He got a little tired. Um, casting a 10 weight is tough. It's rough. It's it's really hard. So I said, you know, get out your seven weight. Let's uh, let's fish for walleye. Let's fish for small uh, smallmouth. Whatever. He had a little a little white streamer on, and. Uh, he ended up hooking into a really nice muskie. It was his first muskie ever. I think we actually have a picture of it. Um, Seth, if you can pull that up, it says muskie yeah. on a seven weight. Yeah. Um, this was his first muskie, and uh, it was a great fish, and it was on a seven weight. Oh, pretty fish. Boom. Right there. Um, so I don't really like targeting muskie. Um, if you've never caught a muskie, it's usually fish for something else, and they're going to bite. They're, they're predators. They're out there. Um, they'll hit a 3-inch fly just as soon as they'll hit a 9-inch fly. Um, but you can catch other species on that 3-inch fly as well. Is that Andrew? So shout out to Andrew for uh, shout out to yeah, Andrew killing right that. Bow! Yeah, that's awesome. On a 7-way, man. That's killer. That's a beautiful fish. That's super cool. What did you catch that on? Uh, it was a, uh, like, like I said, I think it was an intermediate line, seven weight. It was like, a it might've been an articulated, geez, I don't know the name of it. Uh, is Zonker? Is a Zonker? Does that sound right? No. No? Maybe. Okay. Don't, oh. don't. Maybe not a Zonker. I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, so I know that one of those that he caught, let me, you want me to pull another one, up, another one of these up for sure. you? Yeah. All right. So I know that he's, that he got one of these. Uh, there's one. Right. Yeah. So this was correct? actually on a ten weight. He was actually fishing for musky at this point. Okay. Uh, and this is actually on one of Seth's custom tied flies. This is a uh, articulated perch. I think that's right about eight or nine inches. 
Um, and at this point in time, it was winter. Uh, it snowed on us that day. Um, and, uh, you know, it was a really cool picture. Um, really cool fish. And uh, it was a good, good memory. So I've had the opportunity to ask a couple other people this question that are, you know, big in the musky game. And I have think I've kind of got my answer on this, but this is something that I think other people would like to know too. You hear all these people talk about fall. I see the leaves. I see the color of the leaves on that. And, mu- and fall musky fishing, fall musky fishing, fall musky fishing. And that's all people want to do. Like I've talked to musky guides and they talk about how – you know the la- like the first couple weeks of September and the whole month of September is just the like month the, the season that everybody wants for muskies. Um, why is that? And are people correct to assume that that's the best time to fish for muskies? Uh, you're you're asking the wrong person on that. <laughs> I, I don't claim to be an expert on anything, so just because I'm speaking to the internet right now doesn't mean I have any idea what I'm talking about. That's great. But in my opinion. That's how you know that somebody actually probably has a little bit of a clue. If they if they lead by saying, "Well, you know, great question, Seth. I think my opinion is." No, go ahead. Sorry. All right. So, so yeah, my my opinion, and this is only my opinion. Um, musky eat due to their metabolism. Warmer water, they need to eat more. Cooler water, they eat less. Now, the truth of the matter is. There are larger forage options in the fall. So, you know, you have your fry that spawns from eggs. You know, those minnows, they might grow a little bit larger into the fall. The forage is larger for the muskie. So people are fishing larger baits. Um, Those muskie might be eating larger lures or flies, but they don't eat as much. And that's in my opinion, they don't eat as much. Some people say they put on the winter feed bag. I've heard that. I've heard so many people say that. They put on the feed bag. I have not found that to be accurate. But again, that's for the waters that I fish. Uh, I would much rather go out in the uh, summertime and find some super active fish than, again, fish for um, you know many hours for one hefty fish in the fall. People say that that the fish are larger in the fall because they're you know they're trying to you know produce egg mass. Um, Again, I don't know if that's correct or not. In my experience, that has not been correct. But then again, there's so many different places that people fish for muskie, especially in the larger lakes. Um, perhaps that is accurate there. But for what I fish, I have not found that. doesn't mean it's not true. It's just, yeah, I, I don't think that's correct. Yeah, right on. Okay, so um, moving on from that, what do you think is the best... Um, Fishing for muskies is the question that we got here on the channel right now. Do you think that it's you, your odds are better fishing high water or low water? Um, well, it depends. It, that's. I don't think your odds are better in either of those times. It just it changes where you're going to target the fish. Um, if it's high water, um, usually that means it's high and it's fast. Uh, you're going to want to fish, you know, current breaks. Um, and I've actually found fish even in high water in really, really small cuts. You know, the main flow is going here. There's a small cut. The water, you know, pools back in an eddy right there. And fish are holding in, you know, three feet of water. Um, and so uh, that's nice in those situations. Um, low water, well... Low water is going to push fish to to different areas. They're not going to usually hold um, in extremely low water. So then it kind of makes them go to the pools, uh, which is nice. So I guess that might congregate some of the fish. And again, I'm only speaking about river systems and specifically small river systems. In a large river system, um, you know, a fluctuation of water probably isn't going to change much. But when you're fishing in a river that generally is about three feet of depth. Um, there's a huge difference between three feet of depth and six feet of depth and a foot and a half of depth. So um, I'd be curious to know too, just from experience, like I know that typically trout fishing, one of the things that that we focus on is if you get a surge of water, so you get a rainstorm or a melt off or something like that, that water level comes up and, and right away when that water level comes up, you can do really well fishing. Um, right as that water's rising and kind of as it comes because those fish just have like a whole new source of food coming at them. I think that's the general idea. 
Um, and so they'll kind of go into a little bit of a craze there. But after that water gets up and it stays up for a little bit, you can kind of just, you got to, everything just kind of has to settle back down in order to get into a zone. I don't know if you'd think, if you think that's the case with river fishing for warm water species or not. I, I don't want to just, this is the whole thing. This is just about muskies, but you know, cause this is can equate to smallmouth and stuff like that too. Yeah. But I mean, would you, do you know, I mean, is that something that, that you've been able to find see it that's been consistent at all or um that's a usually usually in our summer times we don't have those large surges of water um usually uh, the rivers that we have there's a, a large surge in the spring and then in the fall it's kind of a gradual rise back up in the fall and usually in the summer times we have a fairly um um, there's like an equilibrium that hits in the, in the summer where there aren't those big changes. And usually I fish in the summers. Um, so I, I couldn't say, I can't say if the muskie, you know, change drastically um, in those surge uh, events. Sure. All right. Well, I'm going to start out with something else here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring another video up over into our, our screen over here. Okay. And um, we're going to be able to, uh, this is your uh, rat. Your, you got a bass crushing a rat fly. Oh yeah, right here. So this is a uh, this is a fly that I tied. This is one one of those that I tied up for you. Yeah, this is the, the Rat King. The Rat King. Yeah, right on. So this is a pretty this is a pretty cool deal. Um, nice cast. That's not a nice cast. <laughs> Boom, dude, you laid that thing out, man. That was great. So the reason why I play that is because um, Brook Trout asked the question to us, um, "What is your go-to topwater lure?" And I just. I threw that out there just because I knew that you were, you know, you had that. I saw it here in the lineup of videos. Um, yeah. That thing looks ratted up right there, actually. That's, well, that's you know, <laughs> it just came out of a 18, 19 inch smallmouth's mouth. I mean, what, what do you expect a fly to yeah, look like? You got like? that fish in pretty quick, too, man. That was, that was, what weight rod are you using right there? Uh, that is an eight weight rod. Um, yeah, so that's a, uh, that's, that's a custom fly from Seth. Um, a couple years back, uh, I had some really good success with conventional fishing. Um, the truth is, I conventional fish more, I gear fish more than I than I fly fish. Um, so, what I've learned is to take what I I've learned from conventional fishing and to apply it to fly fishing, rather than learning how to fly fish with what you know people say works for fly fishing. I went to Seth and I said, Hey, I know. that's what I fish with when I'm conventionally fishing and he said hey I could make you a fly that, that, that looks like that um, Seth if you have that picture that shows those rats with the uh, the flies I think they might uh, like to see that yeah that's, let me grab that so for you. I took what I learned from gear fishing and I applied it over um, and I've had great success so if you look right here you know, we got that, um, I don't know if it's called a Mighty Mouse there in the middle. I the, love that thing. Yeah, right. Is that a Mighty Mouse? I, you know, the, everybody's got their own patterns. Uh, I know that it's not like a Master Splinter. No. I know that it's not the uh, Moorish Mouse. So by process of a living, it looks mighty to me. I, I call it the Mighty Mouse. Yeah. Like, I don't know why. Bum, I just love bum, that bum, thing. Bum. Uh, and then we got the uh, Rat King in the upper left and the upper right. So the difference there is the upper left, that looks, it's more of like a uh, a D and d um, kind of, you know, man, I tied those so long ago. It's it funny kinda, looking at old yeah, flies now. <laughs> it kind of dives down, and the one on the upper right with that uh, foam—that's the how it's a howitzer popper head, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it pushes more on the water. Um, but I have another another video on here of crushing another 19-inch smallmouth with um, with that other fly. Um, so again, the top water. I love these. Um, that's what I would go with if I was fishing for smallmouth. Um, you know, you catch a muskie on these, you catch pike on these, you have to use a leader of some kind, uh, fluorocarbon or metal. I actually use metal, um, in all of these clips. Um, I think it's not too kinky, perhaps not too kinky bite wire is what I was using in these. If that is answers. that the leader that I, is that the leader that I sent to, that I, I believe that we so. tied up just what we did it. Yeah. Right on. Um, so cool, yeah. Modi, uh, Cody confirmed that that is a mighty mouse. Oh, it, is that us. really what it's called? Yeah, yeah. You you scored, and I, and Cody, I just want to throw this out <laughs> nice. there to you. Like you need to know something. Benjamin, my friend, um, is very contrary, 
And he uh, he likes to nickname things and just come up with names on the spot. So the fact that he was like, yeah, that's Mighty Mouse, and he was right, and you're telling him that he's right, that's awesome. Because if I'd have been like, yeah, that's Mighty Mouse, he'd have been like, nah, you know what, on second thought, I don't think that, never mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you got a mouse fly, no need for long casts video that you dropped me here. Um, oh, yeah. Should this... I bring this up? This is a this is another kind of rat style fly that, that you had here. Yeah, there's actually audio on this one. I don't know if it. Yeah, that'll play. Will it play audio? Yeah, fly? that'll, that'll okay. play. Uh, you won't be able to hear it, but it will air. So okay. So um, and I have the audio on this turned down just slightly, because, so that we can talk over it while it's playing. So you just dropped that thing in the water. Uh yeah. Oh. Kind of. <laughs> let go. No way. The fact that they're still rolling means that it's coming back. Yeah! <laughs> oh, I love it. That thing's awesome. Oh, my gosh. So there's two There's two tips to learn from this video. Um, One, actually, carry I'll, a pliers with you so you don't have to stick your th- hand down the fish's throat like that. Yeah. No, I, actually, th- three tips that I'll, I'll leave with you guys. You got so, your pliers? Um, number one, always fish foam. Okay, if you ever see foam on a river, um, it means that, well, first off, it means that there's faster water upriver from you, and it's coming down, it's created those bubbles, but the foam means that there is an eddy. So what happened is the current is flowing downstream, and eddy is where the water hits a diversion of some kind, and it pulls back around. And you can look in this video, and you can see that foam is where those bubbles have come back. All right, so it's a it's a feeding area for fish. It allows fish to have you know um, you know cover or something to block that current, so a current break. Um, so anytime I see foam, I'm like I have to fish right there. I knew there'd be a fish in there, and that's how you call it. Uh, the second thing to learn from this video is that bass and musky as well they're predators and they're when they go into predator mode um like so when i'm guiding somebody and like a fish bites and they miss i like get it right back get it right back that fish is still looking for whatever it missed um if you've ever seen a bass crashing on minnows um it 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 follows them it keeps going um it's not just gonna you know hit it and 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 get away it's still there and so predator mode get that fly right back in there it will usually hit again um, so that's the second tip. Number three is the Mighty Mouse works. <laughs> the Mighty Mouse. Oh, yeah. Uh, foam is home and wood is good, according to the commenters on our Oh, really? Right that's, a, that's a thing? Foam, foam is, is home. home. Cody says foam is home and Ryan says wood is good. All so, right. I, yep. I can't see those comments on here. I'm, I'm trying to find them. <laughs> oh, and, and boulders are holders. This is turning into like a Dr. Seuss fishing thing. This is I can deal with this. This is cool. So foam is home, wood is good, and boulders are holders. I really like that. I might start telling my clients that. Uh, yeah, that's going home with us, guys. Tom, Thank you for that. Tom Meyer, um, can I use that if I if I you know cite you? Can I can I use that? <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. All right, so uh, g- get your questions in. Let's see what else we got. Uh, is musky better when the water's high or low? We did that one. How much do you think the the fly selection has to do with the success? For Esox, what do you think about that? The selection um, of the fly. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do another you know uh, caveat here. Um, while I do guide for musky, that's true. I mostly guide with conventional gear. Um, the people that I take musky fishing, fly fishing, that is, um, I let them know. It's like I I know where the musky are. I know how to catch them. Um, but fly fishing isn't my main game. So. I've caught a lot of them, um, so I can you know speak to this, but I am not an all masterful expert on this. That being said, if you're fishing for musky, only fish streamers. Um, I think it's a exercise in frustration if you're going to fish top water for muskies. Um, streamers work. You can work them fast. You can cast them easier than you can cast a large. Uh, popper for musky that's my opinion again um but streamers work i mean 
streamers work really well when you have a musky the one thing about fly fishing for musky that is so much better than conventional fishing is that you have a longer rod and so you have the ability when that fish is coming towards your boat or your raft or whatever to do an awesome figure eight um, pattern and since you have that long rod you can get it down you can get it out you can do all sorts of things um, a lot of the fish that are caught fly fishing for musky um, maybe a lot is the wrong word but a fair number are caught on that figure eight and streamers work great for the figure eight top water does not work great for the figure eight so that's one of those reasons stick with streamers you're usually good with that yeah, and you know the the other things that I've heard, you know, just from my input on that question. Like I said, I'm not a warm water guy per se, but I am. Um, you know, I, I've done enough esox. You know, it, the, the different things that you got to understand too is like pike and muskie do, in my opinion, my experience fishing for them is very, very, very different. Um, a pike, um, <laughs> I actually prefer to pike fish over muskie fish. Um, and, and the reason why I prefer to, and some guys would just shoot me over this, but the reason why I prefer to pike fish over musky fish is because they don't make me work as hard. Um, I, just to being dead serious. Like, I feel like, um, I feel like pike are like, are just, they're just mean and ornery and they just want to fight and they're, wow. And they just want to eat everything that comes in front of them. And muskies are like stuck up. It's true. They're just like, maybe I'll follow that. Nah. If you want to fish, maybe I would no. Yeah, if you want like, to fish, like fish what is that? Musky. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to catch, go for pike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and and so that's why it's so rewarding, though. I mean, the guys that do get them, and I totally get it. So I just, I just, uh, you know. So, um, but the things that I've been that I've heard and the things that I've found that I think are, are true is you have kind of three, um, three parameters to go by. And that's the size, the action, and the color. Um, and you can put those in various orders, and people will. Um, but I think that a muskie will probably prioritize, if it's going to eat and it's in a feeding mood, it will probably prioritize the size and the action over the color. I, that, would, that would be my my guess but again these are all opinions i mean and fishermen all have different ones so you know just take this from what we from what we, would you agree with that benjamin you think i mean yeah. correct me if i'm wrong i'm totally down to be wrong here. no you know? no I, I think i would agree with you i think that what we are doing here is not trying to tell you how to be better fishermen in warm water we're just telling you what our experiences are in warm water and if you glean some information from that that's awesome if you sure. take away a little nugget that's great we're not teaching you how to be better fishermen you guys are great fishermen um but we're showing you our experiences and sometimes it's good to you know have information right 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 so um yeah somebody else has got a question here ryan wants to know when it comes to fly fishing oh he said still water uh, musky is better to have distance to your casts, obviously, for, yeah. versus rivers and stuff. Um, no, no disagreement there. Um, Steve wants to know when it would be better to throw a full sink line versus uh, a sink tip. Uh, I, I can take that one if you want. So go ahead, man. Um, I, I would prefer, and again, I'm not a huge fly fisherman, um, but I would prefer a full sink line rather than a sink tip. Um, for, um, well, I guess it has to do with the figure eight. And so when you have the full sink line, um, you, and again, it all depends on the size leader that you're usually, usually a musky fisherman is fishing with like 30 inches of 50 pound, uh, mono attached onto like, uh, 12 inches of bite guard metal of some site. So it's a fairly short leader directly tied onto that full sink. And so what happens is you're able to strip all the way in and you're still going to have out a few, a few inches, I'm sorry, a few feet that is when you're doing your figure eights. Um, I prefer that rather than having the sink tip that I've attached to my main line, just because when I bring it in through the guides, I've had it catch probably because I didn't attach the sink tip to my line properly. Um, but it creates issues. Um, and so that's why I would say just go full sink. Um, 
as soon as you, if you're river fishing with a full sink tip and it's shallow you're gonna have to strip as soon as it hits the water and that's what you want to do anyways you want to get that fly moving you don't want to let it sit there it's not a bass it's not going to come up and just look at it and just kind of slurp it it wants movement it wants fast um and again this is kind of like summertime fishing maybe in the fall or in the spring they're a little more th lethargic um, but in the summer they are going they are they're going after those baits so strip 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 and uh yeah. The uh, the other thing that I would throw in there too is um, it would depend if you're in a spot where you're just walking and waiting and you're fishing. You know, we don't have a ton of like walk and wade musky fishing up here, but we do have a little bit. Um, and uh, and so if you're walk and wade fishing, you're not going to be carrying two rods with you. So if you bring a rod with a full sink line, that's what you're going to be doing um, the entire time. And the rate at which you're sinking. The other thing is that when you're, if you if you're doing that, you could carry another spool with you of floating line. The advantage to the sink tips, and this just comes from my trout fishing stuff, is that you can quickly switch. So if you want to throw a popper in the middle of summer, and then you want to quick switch and throw a streamer, you can throw that sink tip on, and that floating line. You know, when you get, I make some of these flies that jackknife. You know, I got one that I call the jackknife, and when you strip that thing, it'll just do a a complete 180 profile or a 90 degree profile to you kind of position itself in an ambush bush position for the for the pike or muskie and when you do that on a full pause on a full sink line that thing's gonna pause and then go like this and it's gonna float back down but um when you're when you're on a you know sink tip with floating line that thing's gonna pause and it should just stay right there depending on what the water's doing so yeah just some point. other options just some other options for you but but i agree you know if you're gonna be just fishing streamer streamer streamers you know uh, it, it, you know the other thing too is you know an intermediate with a sink tip turns the front half of that line into um you know a, a full sink line so um just uh yeah keep that in mind but i do the guides you do have to have smooth transitions the last thing you want to do is pull in for a figure eight hook a fish and then have that thing rip a whole bunch of your line out and have a knot catching a guide and destroy your rod yeah, so exactly <laughs> obviously um that's not what you got going on cody as far as um wire leaders um i uh i use a a rig that i got from bill shearer down at bill shearer's we tie at fly shop in boulder junction and basically, there's a couple things. I have some videos on this on the YouTube channel. You can check this out. But it's essentially uh, s some stuff called Not Too Kinky, K-N-O-T, Not Too Kinky Bite Wire. Um, attached, and that would attach to your fly via a perfection loop. But that actually goes up to an Invisa swivel, like a 25-pound Invisa swivel, which is a fluorocarbon swivel that flexes and everything. And then that goes to like a 30-pound or 50-pound mono or floor or whatever, and then goes to your main line. So I do have a video on that. If you just search how to make a musky fly fishing leader, that should pop up. Um, and then, uh, we're going to continue here, um, to, to go through some of these clips. I want to, could, could I respond to Cody first? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing? Go ahead. Uh, hey, Cody Cox. Uh, I just wanted to say, um, you're talking about, you know, casting tips for, you know, when you have that, uh, metal leader. And I, I want to be completely honest with you. Ugly casts catch fish. <laughs> Remember that my fly casting ability is atrocious okay? i'm married if that says anything <laughs> you know uh, ugly casts catch fish you know? uh, you don't you don't need a beautiful cast you don't even need a great cast you just need a cast that gets the and fly. my wife's hot <laughs> you just need to get that fly out there um it depends on where you're fishing but river fishing you don't really need long casts and and seth hopefully will pull up a clip right here it'll kind of give an idea that you don't really need those long casts um you just need to be in the right spot i'm looking for the right one <laughs> at the right time that is what which uh what's the what's the video called i apologize what's the video that you want benjamin uh, I have no idea what. Oh, it's I called. thought you said. I thought you said there were, you were like there insinuating is one. The that one I... with the one with a Josh. Peel, oh, peel and drag. Oh, yeah. Um, is that the uh, moose fly? Yeah, you can pull that moose fly up one. Yeah, for okay, sure. Let's do moose fly. And then the one before that as well. Oh, but the moose fly is the good. moose. Okay, so there's the moose fly. I'm just gonna throw that picture up. You guys can look at that while I bring. All right. Bring so here. I'll I'll tell them about this fish. So this fish was caught. Um, you know on a figure eight directly in front of uh, Josh. Josh is from Peel and Drag. You guys have probably seen him on YouTube. Um, and this fly was awesome. It was tied um, with moose uh, moose hair, moose, I don't even know what, 
Uh, Seth, Seth. There was a, yeah, there was a, a moose that got hit by a vehicle and unfortunately killed up on Bates Amosel Road. And one of the guys that was there pulled over, grabbed me a bunch of moose fur to tie a fly. And so I tied this Buford out of it. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, here you go. I got the video right here. This is so cool. Um, and by the way, mad props. You're going to see, like, Benjamin go full blown Bruce Willis on this muskie. He didn't even need a net, but he didn't want to make the rest of us look bad by netting our fish. He could have just tackled it and like ah. Um, but like you got this is what this is what happened. Will there be audio for him? Uh yeah. Okay. Oh, what happened? I don't know what happened there, buddy. I lost. Uh, Okay, I'm going to show that video again, but I have to do it a different way. My monitor here died. Did your monitor just go out on you? Yes, it did. Yeah, right on. We're going to take care of that here real quick. I'm going to go ahead and bring this up. They'll watch that. and uh... Step out on that rock right there. And uh, just do a, do a continuous loop out there. Just step out on that rock and do a loop. Just keep doing loops. There you go! Get him in, get him, get him. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Yes! Woo! That was crazy, man. It is the clip over, I can't see. Yep, I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bring it back here for you, buddy. We're gonna go ahead and watch that one more time. If we can. Hopefully we can. I can I can talk to him and tell him about that. Yeah, go ahead, man. You're you're All on. Right. So, um, you know, uh, peel and drag was having a long day. Uh, I was frustrated. Again, musky fishing is hard. It's long. It's not super rewarding. Step out on that rock though, right there. It's cool. Um, he he saw a fish follow in. It was kind of lazy. Uh, and you know the fish didn't bite. It was just kind of a lazy follow. Said, Step out hey, on that rock right up, there. Don't give up hope. Jump back in there. Um, He's kind of right there at the and edge, uh, just do a his loops. do a continuous you know, loop out there. there. You need to get down there and you need to get that loop out. Just step out on that rock um, and on his first loop. That and first do a loop. Uh, that just his keep first doing loops. There you go. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Ah! Notice again how there's there's that pocket uh, whenever you're fishing warm water it's just like with you know trout you're going to be fishing those eddies those pools those pockets anything that's a current break will hold fish um nice fish too as you can just see right there really beautiful fish yeah that was awesome man i'm i, I love this stuff this is just it's awesome i trying to navigate some of these uh technical things here for you guys I, I apologize it was a lot bringing in uh some of these other videos and getting all this stuff but i uh, appreciate you guys hanging out with us how many people we got watching here with us right now we're looking at what do we got here right now we got 18 people hanging out eight likes and 18 people that means you got to hit that like button by the way um these two hats are being given away tonight so um i think right now cody deserves one that's what i think what do you think benjamin I would definitely. The say dude's so. been on it, man. He's been like putting questions out. So, Cody, tell me if you want the D and D, or if you want the the cutthroat that we got going on here. One of these is yours. I think I know which one you're gonna like. I I think I'd. And I would have. This is the story behind these hats. I would have totally gotten one of these. But look at how ridiculous that makes my head look. I guess you can't really tell, but in person that thing is just like, you know. So sticking to the risen. That's cool. D and D, or. Uh, or your uh, cutthroat. So, Cody, you got one of those. I got another hat to give away. So, um, get your questions in, cause the best the best questions are gonna win those that last hat, cause the other two are gone now. So, you, we got one more hat to give away. Let's keep rolling, Benjamin. What do you want to talk about, man? You had a thing about reading seams and pockets and stuff. You want to talk about that? Yeah. So I have a uh, a raft um, shot on there. Uh, Client Small River Eddy, I think is what it's called. All right, let me look for that one. Got it right here. We're going to bring that up. So and, uh, this is a minute-long clip, and I won't speak over top of it. Um, I guess I can just kind of, you know, preface it. Uh, this is middle of the summer, so warm water. Right. Um, Trail up on that now. From uh, cold to warm to kind of a little bit warmer. All right, um, Trail up on that now. I'll let it run while you guys look at this. 
I would not cast for a second. We might bump a rock here. Don't worry about it. Just letting you know. I want you to cast underneath these rapids on the right side, back in this uh, spot right here on the right. Notice the inside corner of where it's this calm over here. Creates this wonderful eddy. Yes, um, exactly. Cast back up and Come down. on, smash it, smash it. it. Doesn't get a fish, but beautiful location for those fish. Oh, to be oh, oh I was thinking it might happen. Oh, it's beautiful. All right. So the eddy that was like right in there, right in that there corner go. right there. Right back in yeah. that corner, yeah. that, that calm water. Yep. And then we're gonna get another cast down beneath these rocks center. Be prepared river. for a fish right. An awesome current break. Right there. Current breaks yeah. aren't always on the corners or the sides of the river. Sometimes you're gonna have awesome places, you know, middle of the river, um, and they hold fish. Uh, they hold smallmouth, they also hold musky. Um, you know, when I take my clients out, they're like, where should I cast? I'm like, have you ever fished for trout? They said, yeah, I'm like, fish the same locations that you fish for trout. Um, you know, people go musky fishing, like, where should I cast? I said, I say, have you fished for smallmouth before? They're like, yeah, fish the same locations. They will hold the same fish. Um, I think that's important. Um, you know, in that spot shows you, um, where you can kind of get those casts in. Um, seams are important. Uh, seam is where you're going to have, you know, two, you know, currents of water that are coming together. One might be faster, one might be slower. Uh, I think I have a seam yep, shot on here. Yep, you got a fish here. seams and pool shot I'm going to bring up. Um, and this kind of shows you how drastic the difference can be between a seam where there's fast water and there's that slow water. Usually if you can cast across the river uh, above and then bring your streamer back through the fast stuff as it swings in... Um, Okay, I'll go ahead and play that here for you. Awesome. All right. Can they see this right now? Yeah. Oh. So this is just a really short clip, but it kind of shows you guys that that fast water right there next to that, uh, that slower stuff. Um, great opportunity for those ambush predators that are in there um you know stripping your streamer through it um here's another clip of you know that fast water on the left there and then the slower stuff right there um and, and i kind of have a, a a little bit of a contradiction when i'm fishing warm water um, rivers if i'm in a river that is very fast i like to fish the pools and the slow water However, if I'm in a river that with the really slow gradient to it, it's kind of a, you know, not a whole lot of current in that river, I go to the locations that have moving water. So uh, I don't know if that makes sense, Seth. Does that make sense? I was reading some of these comments. Say that again. The difference between fast water and slow water you ended on. Okay, so if I'm in a river that's mainly quick. Yeah. I look for water that's slow, that's a pool. It's going to um, separate them. They're going to have a resting area. Yeah. Yeah. But if I'm in a different type of river that's kind of a meandering river that doesn't have a whole lot of current to it, I then look you're gonna for look areas at... with yeah. rapids yeah. or current. One of the things that I've talked to, like, tournament fishermen, like tournament walleye fishermen, gearheads, right? And, and one of the things that, like, I was talking to one of the guys, I can't remember his name, Jeremy something maybe? He took uh, Nationals. In, um, in the U.S. for walleye fishing a couple years ago. And I got a chance to talk to him, and I said, so, like, when you look at a lake for the very first time, you've never fished it before, what are you going to do? Um, and he very clearly said, I'm going to look. He goes, show me a lake, any lake. And I showed him a picture of a lake, and he looked for the one thing that stuck out about that lake. And, like, you know, say, say it was, like, in an oval, but like on one spot, there's like a point, there's just a point that came out or something different about it. He's like, right there, I'm going to focus right there. And I was like, why? He's like, because everything else in the lake is just plain. The topography is plain. He's like, but here there's some difference. And it offers the, gives the fish a lot of options to suit its mood. If it wants to lay low in deeper water, it can. The, ox the, the oxygen level of the water changes, you know, the thermal climb is there all. And that was in a lake. But I'm sure that like transfers over to rivers too. If you're in a river that's just super slow, but then there's like a rapids in the one spot of the river where there might not be anything else, hey, try there, you yeah. know? So, um, and it's weird too, because we kind of get in our, 
get in our zones. You know, I remember like I've, I've caught a lot of musky um, out of that stretch of river that your video was just showing. And um, what was really funny though, guys is, and I told Benjamin this the other day when he was, when he sent me these videos is I, I'm watching this and I see this video of Josh from Peel and Drag, like do this figure eight down underneath this rock. I just want, I, I'm embarrassed to tell you guys how many times I've stood on that rock and I've cast it into those rapids and I've never caught a fish. And all I had to do was get my Mickey Mouse pole and, you know, sit on the rock like a little kid dangling my feet off and just and dangle my, my fishing pole off the end and catch a muskie. Like, this guy literally just goes, yeah, just walk you into that rock and stick your rod in the water. And I'm like, I'm on there, like, double hauling my brains out. You know, maybe I got the wrong fly. Maybe I got the wrong leader. Maybe I got the, you know, so you guys get the point. Um, that stuff happens, you know, and it, and it totally just gives you a completely different perspective. So changing things up, trying different things. Um, Dario wants to ask if uh, if we can explain the use of sink tips a little further, whether for trout or for warmer uh, water species. And to clarify, I'm not asking about habitat in a river, but rather finding a good river to check out. People advertise trout water, but never musky water. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's two. I feel like there's two questions there. It's two different people, the Dario oh, and Devin. Oh, Dev. Oh, sorry, my the text is super small. Thanks for clarifying there, buddy. Man, what is up with me tonight? Um, this is wacky. Dario so, asked the first question about the. I got sentence. you. How do you locate prospective mu musky water? I got you. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's tackle the sink tips real quick, um, Dario. Just so you know, we've got that. Those sink tips, and I thought I had one sitting up here. I guess I don't. I make my own sink tips based on length. Um, I've got videos on this you can check out. Basically, I tie them per, like, like people manufacture their own dry fly leaders on the fly to be able to, like, suit the specific need for the current that they're in. I actually carry a tungsten core rolls of sink tip, much like dry fly leaders, except they're tungsten core, they're coated and all that kind of stuff. And I pick the weight of the leader and the length of the leader based on the speed and the depth and the presentation that I want of a hole. And I can do that right then and there. Um, and it, you know, if I was with Benjamin and we were on a float trip for warm water species, I could do the same thing for musky if I wanted to. However, as Benjamin stated earlier, when you're attaching loops, loop connections and square knots and nail knots and all kinds of different things to your fly line, when you're do bringing your leader real far in to the eyelets to be able to do those figure eights and you get an eat, that thing's going to rip the line out. Yeah, and if that knot catches on your eyes or your rod, you're toast. It's just going to destroy your rod. So I, I, hopefully that helps. Um, and then uh, going to uh, Devin's question about um, locating prospective musky water. We did hit on that a little bit, um, but, you know, it, w the one thing, scouting is always good. Like we can talk about that. Like scouting is always good. And, 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 and if – if anybody told you that they didn't get on like satellite images and start looking at watersheds, you know, they're lying through their teeth. And so, you know, they're a fisherman. Um, but, uh, get, you know, getting on, temp taking temps of waters website, you know, Michigan website, you know, all the Wisconsin, Minnesota, you know, different things. They have um, species charts and different things. Something that's kind of fun that I appreciate is if you go on to the Michigan DNR website and you look up um, lakes and rivers and the species that those areas say that they're in, not all the musky water is on there. Just going to give you that little tip. Not all the musky water is on there. There are places that hold muskies that it doesn't say. And so if you, you know, if you, if you're feeling lucky and you want to go try different places, it, same goes for there are places that it says there are musky where there are none. <laughs> okay, so don't oh. don't believe everything you read on the internet. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> I thought, thought you were going to out me with, like, exposing some trout water or something. This was going to come into, like, a little duel where I was going to, like, name Benjamin's best musky water and he was going to, like, throw down and name my trout holes. No, we don't do that. Um, Benjamin actually goes to my trout holes to hook bait for his muskies. But, uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. What? No, 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 no. Um, so, yeah. Um, anyways, yeah, Brook Trout's making fun of me. This is N.A., bro. Like, he's making fun of me because I'm you know, getting all out of control here. So what else, you got any tips for scouting? I, I, we don't want to give, you know, these aren't handouts that we're giving away here, but do you got any tips, you know, uh, for folks when tips. it comes to 
you know, coming to the UP and looking around for places to, to hunt muskies? Uh, I would say, uh, well, go to Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's quite a tip or not. Um, again, I, w- I wouldn't... <laughs> How, how honest can I be? I wouldn't come to the UP if I was looking for muskie. It's tough, okay? Uh, it's That's tough. why I sell the adventure aspect of it, man. Like, I, I'm, I will say this. Like, the, and I'm not, uh, you, I don't want to interrupt, but I will say it's an adventure. you got to love having an adventure. Benjamin, how many times do we strike out when we go and check out new stuff? All the time. All the time, right? And and I say I, you're either going to strike gold or you're going to strike out. And, and that's pretty much how it is when you're scouting for musky water. The thing is, is you've got to enjoy the adventure. You've got to realize that it's not all about the fish. It's, you know, like we, we, we're fishing. Yes, we love fish. Okay, we catch fish. But it's not all about the fish. you gotta, you got to dig the adventure to get out. So let's start there and then what? <laughs> uh, start there and then don't fish for musky. Uh, that's that's gonna be my my suggestion. I actually just did a, a video on my own channel a couple days ago, a week ago. I don't know. Yeah. And it was like four tips for a beginner musky fisherman, and I can really quickly run through. The Do biggest it, man. Tip. Do it. And you know what, guys? We're gonna get right, we're gonna wrap up. So get your questions. And I got one more hat to give away. Uh, We've been on for an hour right now. So get your questions in right now. So the biggest tip when it comes to musky fishing is do not fish for musky. Um, and I and I say that in all honesty. If you want to catch a musky. Don't fish for musky. Go to a body of water that holds musky. You know, figure out online or go out with somebody that's going to take you. Um, but fish for smallmouth, fish for walleye, fish for pike. Incidentally, you will catch a musky, um, and you'll have a much better time because you're going to have action. Um, the the biggest thing about fishing for musky is that, you know, you might sit there and strip your fly for eight hours and then. Um, there at the end, you'll have a follow. And since you've been stripping for eight hours, you're not thinking right. And you miss the fish because you don't do your figure eight in time. You're not paying attention. Uh, if you're fishing for other species, you're not, you know, you're getting so much more action. So your brain is more into it. You're feeling better. Uh, when that met muskie does bite, um, it's just a better experience. And, um, Fish for musky once you know how to fish for musky. I guess that's my my suggestion. I don't know if that helps you. I think it was Devin Bloom. Hopefully that helps you, my man. Yeah, you know, um, you're you can connect waterways too. You know, I would say that's a fair tip to say. Connect waterways. You know, there's places that you know. Hey, this place holds musky, and this is a watershed that connects to it. And, you know, we're currently dealing with some right now that guys have said there's no way that muskies would be in there because, you know, the water that connects to it's maybe too cold. Um, but there's but they're there. Um, so, you know, they're going to do they're going to do crazy things. You know, um, Benjamin, you and I talked the other day because you have this um, you have this knack for like keeping meticulous records of your outings. Um where you went, what the temperature was, how many fish you saw, where, you know, what time of day it was, the, you know, do you do barometric pressure? I don't know. No, I I don't pay attention to that. Um, (laughs) uh, You know, moon phase, all that kind of stuff. You know, some people do. Um, But there's a lot of details there. How many years have you been doing that? Uh, Since coming up here. So, again, like maybe nine years worth of notes. So I have uh, a PDF here of Benjamin's. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, man. oh man, that's, you should have golden. That was awesome. I'm taking a screenshot of that moment once this video uploads. Oh my gosh. Uh, but <laughs> we were talking the other day, and um, I've got this. I got a cousin of mine down in Wisconsin, my cousin Tim, and you know everything. Bare, you know, temperature of the air, temperature of the water, you know, all this stuff. Every single thing you could, every time he goes, he's got it all in an Excel spreadsheet. And I look at him and I go, okay, Tim, so what can you tell me? And he goes, nothing. Not a thing. Because they're just, things change. Fish change. Um, so, anyways, dude, we're getting a lot of laughs right now from that, by the way. They're all coming in now. <laughs> That was great. Oh, I love it. You guys are great. 21 concurrent viewers right now. Only 11 likes. Hit that like button. Um, let's see here. So, Benjamin, how did you come up with your logo? That's one question. We've also got another one that want, they want to know what's your personal best bass 
Pike and Musky are. Uh, okay, so the logo, I'll really quickly hit that. Um, my wife is awesome. She made this. I have nothing, uh, really no part in it. Um, she took a large circle hook here. This is from uh, Alaska. I worked as uh, I worked in Alaska for a while fishing up there. Um, the circle hooks are what you use in Alaska. So she took a circle hook, she made it into a fish's mouth, the water down below, and then she added the HW on the inside of it. So um, props to my wife, she's awesome. Um, uh, personal best pat, bass, pike, muskie, let's see. The last three muskie I caught, they all could have been my personal best. They probably were they, I think they were all 45 or above. Um, sometimes I don't get a good measurement because I'm fishing by myself. Um, and also, it's kind of hard to get a great measurement um, in a kayak. Uh, I mean, that's another story. But when you have to take <laughs> fish out of the water, you got to put them on a bump board. Um, they're big, large fish. Usually I just try to get a picture, get them back in the water, and I eyeball it and say, eh, that's a 40-incher, eh, that's a 35, eh, that's a 45. So I don't know. Uh, same thing goes for my pike. I think my largest pike is probably around 40 inches. I don't know. Actually, it could be 42. It could be 38. I don't know. Um, I don't measure the fish as much as I could. Um, for smallmouth, same thing. I probably have caught a 21-incher in a river. Um which might not be huge if you fished in lakes, um, but a river fish, a 21-incher, is gigantic. So, there you go. Sweet, man. Yep. I think uh, just just uh, in, in wrapping this up, guys, um, one thing I want to give a big shout-out to my buddy Steve Shapiro. Um, awesome guy. I'm giving him this other hat because he's just an awesome dude, and uh, he's helped me kind of promote some of this uh, this stuff. It's just been super cool. I'm going to go ahead and get another video rolling here for you guys, too, because we got another, uh, we actually have another uh, drone shot coming at you, so you can see that. A little bit of drone shot, smallmouth action. Oh, yeah. 106 fish this day that we caught. Oh, my gosh. That was incredible, man. Wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was absolutely awesome. It was a great day on the water. great day in the water and that actually shows those transitional aspects for the river fishing you know you got this fast water and then you have that pool um you know maybe not fish the fast water fish right where it empties into that pool um you know those are those are good areas to to fish anything that's a transition from something to something else um will uh inevitably hold fish yeah, so um, appreciate you guys watching. If you would go ahead and subscribe to this channel, um, and we are gonna we're gonna do this again without the technical difficulties that we had tonight. I really apologize. We've been rolling now for uh, we've been on for an hour and seven minutes. I think we are gonna sign off. Um, we're gonna do this again though. We are absolutely gonna do this again. And you know what they did is they just extended the stay at home order. So. Um, I think I'm going to talk to Benjamin and we're going to work out a way that we can do our own little Iron County fly fishing film tour like video thing here. And uh, this I think this will be awesome. And I might even get – some of you guys don't know my buddy Corey, but I might even get Corey to get on here with us because um, he uh, he's a – He's a fun, we have a lot of fun, and we might put some of our cool fishing videos together. We're going to do this next Friday, 7 o'clock, and um, hopefully I can get these two to join me as well, my buddy Corey and my buddy Benjamin, and we can get them in here. We can do this thing because we are on, we're still on this stay-at-home order for another two weeks. Maybe we can do that. Um, we got to ask permission from, from Mel. And, uh, you know, and Corey's probation officer. No, I'm just kidding. Corey doesn't have a probation officer. I'm getting crazy. Man, maybe somebody did slip something in this. I have no idea what's going on. Um, so, Benjamin, you know, what do you usually say at the end of your videos there, buddy? Uh, well, I actually have a new thing to say today. Oh. And, and that's what I said earlier, but this is for Cody Cox. Uh, ugly, let me actually read this again. Ugly casts catch fish. Oh, there we go. Ooh, all right, guys. <laughs> hey, share the video. Give us a like. Give us a thumbs up or something. Again, props to the guy that gave us a thumbs down before we even started. You're awesome. And um, we're going to catch you guys later.